what somebody had to go through for us to enjoy what we now enjoy. It ought to make us better. We stop being so bougie, taking ownership for what we think we own. Because if they give you a blue slip or pink slip tomorrow, I came to tell you if they take everything, if they take everything, hey! They take everything from me. One thing they can't take from me. And that is my relationship with God. And when I am with nothing, he becomes my everything. I need somebody to remember the day that. I don't care where you are this morning. You did not make it without the sweat and the sacrifice. Somebody was spit on. Somebody was lying on. Somebody was whipped. And you think you something. You, you would not be where you are today. If Jesus had not gone on the cross and been whipped up a hill, and we had ancestors that did the same thing that Jesus did, and we have the audacity to look down on one another. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. Look at your neighbor and say, I need you. I might look like I don't need anything, but I, I can't make it. I can't make it without you. Grab them by the hand. You might not even know. Just grab you a husband need to tell a wife this morning. I need your brother need to tell a brother. A sister need to tell a sister. A friend need to tell a friend. I need you. I can't make it without you. I might have a smile on my face, but my spirit needs you. Can you agree with me, my brother? Can you agree with me, my sister? Can you agree with me, my friend? I, I just need somebody. I just need somebody that can help me make it all up. Come up out of this family. Hey, hey, hey. Martin Luther King did. Why? Well, the Martin Luther King that will stand up. We don't want to do nothing anymore. Because we want to be friends with everybody and everybody's friends with us. Do you not know serving God? You don't have a whole lot of friends, but he gives you a new family. So I'll give you a family. But I need to know what you're going to do with what I've with what I've given you to do it with. You know, and that just leads us right into the blessing that God has for us today. You know, a lot of folk, the, close, the closest they're going to get to a figment of what they can imagine in their finite of their mind after the book they read, the closest they're going to get to it is what they imagine in their mind. But today, God chose us to be blessed by two men. So I, listen to me, listen to me. I've been talking about celebrities in the kingdom. And we, 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 we have some right here in the kingdom that we can, can, can get autographs from, that we can feed of their story. And we, we walk right by them because we, we've gotten bougie now. If, if they're not coming on the television, if... They, they're not, if they're not received by society, we don't know them, but the body of Christ has some celebrities. Yes, yes, yes. Kingdom, and when I look at Chris Scott, when I look at Chris Scott, and I see how God chose us in this hour to witness a man of God that people read about suffering, people read about being falsely accused. We heard it in the Bible, right? We read about it, right? But very few times do we see somebody that God actually chose. And when I talk about, I cannot talk about a Chris Scott without speaking of a Richard Miles. God chose them. I told him back in the study and when I told them they just confirmed, see prophecies are to be confirmed. If I told you something you ain't never heard before that you already know, that prophecy ain't, ain't really much good until you see it, but you've already seen what I said. And God chose them to be chosen. And he chose them, he chose them to go through everything they went through. And then when he was tired of them going through what they were going through, when he saw they didn't give up on believing and trusting him, he sent a man. See, I'm going to go in. D.A. Craig Watkins. I'm going to go in and search these men out. Because God has assigned this 
to me. And whenever you see something that's amazing, something that's strange, something that's peculiar, something you don't understand, it's God. Amen. Saw these two men out. They were exonerated. But apparently they didn't give up. Can I help somebody? Hallelujah. Some of you have given up. You're sitting up here right now, but you gave up. It's too rough. My marriage is too rough. My situation is too rough. But these two men, good God Almighty, as I stand here, I see the evidence of faith. I, I see faith. Locked up, but not chained up. Locked up and free enough to thank God for a greater day. I don't have a job. Thank you, Master. Let me tell you something. Y'all don't have this Paul experience. Uh, while they were in prison Paul and Silas were together I see two brothers Richard and a Chris I see two brothers that prayed together believed together although it was daylight when you got the message but it was midnight in the atmosphere of God because everybody thought it was over yeah. but God said I see them believing in me and I'm going to use them so we are honored to have you all today Amen. Amen. honored to have you all today we want you to come in your way and do what you need to do to inspire us the gospels of the Holy Ghost to do what we need to do today and I believe that it's Chris that's going to come see I feel so personal with them I'm calling them by their first name <laughs> And I'm not good with names. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. First and foremost, I'd like to give all honor and glory and grace to God. Amen. Because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't even woke up this morning. Amen. You know, I'm going to give you a little detail about the story that I went through. And then I uh, want to open up with this passage that I always told myself when I was locked up in prison for a crime I didn't commit. My God, listen well. In 1987, I was tried, convicted, and sentenced to a capital life sentence in prison for a capital murder case. They uh, thought they had the right guy, but all alone, no, they didn't have the right guy. But God knew they had the wrong guy. Amen. That's why I'm standing up here right now talking Hallelujah. about it. Hallelujah. It was kind of a really hard situation at first because the case I had was either life or death because it was a capital punishment case. And when I went to trial, the judge asked me, you know, why would I, why she should see, she shouldn't seek the death penalty. And at that particular time, I really didn't know what to say because it was my first time ever being in this position right here. So I asked God to speak for me. And he told me to tell him, you know, how did you kill an innocent man? And at the, that particular time, she said, well, you just saved your own life. I'm not going to go for the death penalty case. I'm going to give you a capital life sentence. But, you know. I thank God for that because he gave me another opportunity to fight for my life. He gave me another another way to live. So I know I had another opportunity in life. As long as they didn't kill me, I had strength in my body and had faith in God that he had pulled me through this situation. And this passage is Psalms 35. And I used to read it every day when I got up because this like the the part of my life that I had to struggle with it. Stand and read it with you. He said, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and to stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that divides my heart. And I always read that passage that got me through the day. Oh my God. 
Amen. They got me through everything that I needed because they kind of like described what I was going through. Mm -hmm. They convicted me for a crime I didn't commit, but I didn't believe in God and I knew through faith that he was going to make me prevail. Amen. You know, I walk by faith, not by sight. Amen. As long as I walk by faith, God is going to make sure I have a way yes, to see the light. Amen. And you know, they say we was already predestined about what we was going to go through. And as growing up as a kid, my mom you know, was very religious people. And um, they used to have prayer service at each other's house every, every other week. And a guy, the head pastor told me when I walked through, I was about 16, he said, son, when you walk through the crowd, something moved. And I didn't understand what he was talking about That's because I was so young. He said, son, when you walk by, something moved. I was about six or seven then. I'm like, sir, I don't understand. He said, well, you're going to go through something so trying, so hard, so difficult. But the only thing that's going to bring you out of this is the faith you have in God. He said, you don't go, you're not going to even think about it. It's going to be the faith in God that's going to get you out. But me being so young, I'm not understanding what he's trying to tell me. So 12 years later, I was going to my dad's funeral. And the same pastor from the same congregation, but another minister told me the same thing. He said, son, you walk through here, I felt something. And he said, you're going to go through something so trying and so terrible that the only thing that's going to get you through is your faith in God. And that day he told me, say, son, I want you to be at church Sunday. But I didn't even go. I ignored the word of God that he was giving to me. And maybe that's why I got put in the position that I was in. You know, we always heard that God is not going to put a lot, of, too much pressure on your back that you can't carry. Right, right. He knew I couldn't carry that life sentence that long. Oh my God. But he made me do 12 years for it. Well, 12 long, hard years, but it's okay. It's 12 disciples in the Bible. Oh, come on, come on. I like it. Yeah. It's 12 disciples in the Bible. And also the book that we wrote called Tested is 12 men in that book also. Yeah. So I think 12 is my number. Yeah. 12 is a very good number, yeah. if I can say so myself. So when I went to prison, my kids was three and four years old. I didn't have a chance to raise my kids. But God said fit that he left me with my mom out right there to take her this responsibility. She was an angel sent from heaven, if I can say so myself. Because without a mother, it's nothing. The mother is the backbone of our situation. Yeah, come on. And you know, at, at one time my faith kind of withered a little bit, but my mom got me back on track. She wrote me a letter and I got it today. She said, son, if you don't stop doing what you're doing in prison and give your life to God, them doors will never open for you. She said, if you want them doors to open, you got to give your life to God. Come on. And you got to be for real about when you say you had a faith in God. That particular day, I did that. I went to a guy and asked him about my case. The guy gave me a million and one chance to make it out of prison. And when, I, when he told me a million and one chance, I couldn't understand what he meant because mine was like one of the first non-DNA cases in the United States. I didn't have no DNA in my case. A guy had to come back and confess to the crime before I was free. So you tell me God don't work. God is real. Because you tell me what person to come forward and say he actually killed somebody. If it ain't the work of God going through him. So the day he told me that, man, you know, and I read the letter my mom wrote me, I got on my knees and prayed. I think this is the first time I ever just actually got on my knees. And that's what she told me that I needed to do. I got on my knees and prayed that day. The Lord just gave me a second chance at life. Anything you put me on a mission to do, I will complete it. And my mission will be to help others that's in my situation. Yes, sir. Because, you know, you know, Joseph, he didn't start getting this blessing until he started helping people. Come on, that's cool. So, you know, that's when I really got my blessing, when I just told myself that when I get out of prison, if I ever get out of prison, 
the first thing I do is try to go back and try to get some other brothers free that's in prison for crime they didn't commit. And it was so ironic the day that he told me that, and I read the letter and I prayed about it. Like a week later, a lady came to me in prison. And she was a young lady. She was an undergraduate at the University of UTA. She said she wanted me to uh, confess to the crime to let somebody else go. But you know, that's something I couldn't do because I didn't commit this crime, so I'm not going to tell you I did this. And she was so young and so pure, and it was her first case. And I know through the good Lord that he didn't want to send her to me. And she asked me to tell her what happened at night. And I told her. She said, that sounds like the same thing that the other guy told me. Because it was two of us got convicted on this crime. The two of us had to fight for our lives in a court system that we know is very, very corrupt. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know, going through all these trials and tribulations, God said fit to put me back in society again. Amen. To yes. be able to tell my story. Yes. Because we don't understand, you know, if we haven't been tested, we don't have on, a testimony. So, you know, I have a testimony every time I get up here. It's kind of difficult for me to say it because it's kind of like reliving it all over again. But God I always gives me the strength and courage to come through. See, my faith in God was so strong at one particular all the time now that everything that I asked for and everything I ever wanted laying in that bed, I received it. I already received it. And I feel, you know, kind of selfish if I ask God for anything else because He has blessed me in so many more ways. I like that. I like that. I like that. Faith is a good thing. Because my faith wavered some and then it didn't waver none. But when my faith got strong, I knew it was a chance for me to come back to society again. And they always say, as long as you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you can move mountains. God moved a capital mountain for me. Because I had a capital life sentence. My God. With no way out. You know, being in prison like that is like a bottomless pit. There's no daylight, there's no sunshine, oh cold walls, really dark. Oh if you want to know what hell on earth it is, it's prison, trust me. Oh my God. But you know, oh God. the faith of God, he put me out at the right time. He didn't make me grow old in prison. Well, I grew old, but I didn't grow old. Oh when I went to prison, I was 25. When I got out of prison, I was at the age of 40. He put me out right in the time of my prime, where he knew the movement that I could do in changing them people's lives. Right. By storing faith in them and showing them that what y'all are going through right now about financial bills and divorces, all you got to do is look at me. Yeah, come on. I like it. And it'll show you, you know, anything is possible. Yes. Miracles can yes. happen. Yes. Because it's not a day in the world that I thought that a guy would actually come forward and confess to a capital murder. Mm. I laid in the bed many nights praying to God that he would take this case and part them doors like Moses parted the Red Sea. Ah! Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And at the same time, he did it. And you know what was the scariest part about it? When he was doing it, he was showing me he was doing it. Yeah. Look at that. Come on. And, and I, you know, it's like, I, you know, one day I just stood up in the middle of my cell and I'm like, God is good. Is this really showing me that I'm going to actually get out of prison? Because it's like every time I open up a book, it said the innocent man or the man go free. It always gave me some type of serving. Then I was going to be free. Oh my God. And that just let me know that my faith had got strong enough for God can believe that when I get out, I'll you know, serve him and work on this mission that I want to accomplish. And when I said, seen that, it kind of scared me. You know, I didn't know what to take from it. Because in prison walls, you see all kind of cracks and crevices on the wall. And, you know, some days I might see a shape that looked like an angel. And one day I might see a shape that looks like a devil. Yeah.
But you know, there's just sometimes my faith is being challenged. Right, right. And then the next time I look at that wall and I see that angel again right. because he did not already overtook the devil. Mm -hmm. We all go through trials and tribulations in our life. And long as we have the faith in God, we can conquer anything. And right now, my faith in God is so good and so strong. Like I say, if I ask God for anything else, I'll be a selfish. I went from a bottomless pit of having no way out to seeing a whole lot of sunshine that God had placed upon me. Just look at the weather yesterday and it tell you. Yesterday it was ice cold, but now we got sunshine outside. Because God knew it was going to be a beautiful and glorious day for us all. Yes. Because he brought people to y'all church to make y'all understand mm -hmm. the way faith should be taken. Amen. The way you should have faith in God. Because at some time being in my position, you kind of like ask God, why me? Mm. Why, you know, you put this burden on me. And like, I ain't put this burden on you if I didn't feel like you need to go through this situation. Oh God. Maybe God saved my life while I was out in prison. Maybe he stopped somebody from, you know, driving by shooting me. You know, being in a major car accident to, you know, get my life. He saved me. Amen. He like put me in an incubator. Like a brand new baby when I came out again. My whole thoughts of anything criminal or anything has never touched my brain again. You know, he, he just changed me so good and so all the way around that I'm a whole totally different man right now. He's blessed me to be able to be a part of my son's life again, both of them. He rewarded me takes another year for the work I do in the communities and the neighborhoods. He blessed me to owning my own clothing store in Uptown Village, Cedar Hill, called Christopher Men's World. I mean, he just blessed me so many ways and so many times that, you know, it's just unbelievable, unbelievable and a miracle. Yes, sir. Come on. And you know, miracles do happen. Yes, man, because I believe If you look at me and Richard Miles from where we come from. I believe it. We was on the same prison together. Look, look, look. At the same time, passing down the same hallways. And one day Richard was having problems. And I told him, tell Richard to come talk to me because I feel like I'm a big brother to him. And I told him, just be patient. Keep that faith that we had for all those many years. It's gonna happen for us. But that night, I was on the chains coming back to Dallas, Texas. And I was in Dallas County for about two months. And when I sit down and look at TV, I seen Richard Miles on TV getting ready to go home. I said, you see how good God is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had us in this place together. Yeah. He brought me back first, but then he brought Richard back. And then he released Richard. And he showed me and said, this is what you're going to look like when you stepping out them doors. Your hands is going to be raised proud. Yes, yes. Your faith is going to walk through you while you're walking with your hands raised up just like Richard Miles. And when I seen that, I knew my time has come. I knew all the faith that I had put in God has finally came ahead. To be here today and to share my testimony with you all is a beautiful thing. Because if I wouldn't have woke up this morning, I wouldn't even be here to tell y'all this testimony. Thank y'all. Have a nice day.
Heavenly hey, Father, I just want to thank you for waking me up this morning, clothing me in my right mind, giving me the ability of my health and my limbs. Father God, I just ask that you allow self to be placed to the side, the Lord Jesus. Anything that I say, Father God, I ask that it touch the hearts, Father God. Prick minds, Father God, reinstill faith, Father God. But most of all, Father God, let your life, Father God, show sign through me, Father God, that men might see your works, Father God, and glorify the Father that is in me. Amen. Amen. How y'all doing today? All right, all right, man. It's a pleasure and it's an honor to stand before you all today. Um, I actually met Pastor uh, Kennedy at a, uh, another speaking engagement at a school, Martin Wise Elementary, and years, uh, a couple of years, I believe, passed by. And I spoke at um, a school with Miss Lank, Miss Lankford at uh, Townview. And everything went pretty good. And she was like, oh, my God, oh, my God. I got to get you at the church. I got to get you there. I got to get you there. So I'm like, all right, all right. So uh, the pastor finally called me and stuff. And um, he was, he was um, saying that he wanted us to come by and just tell y'all um, our story and what we went through. And so I do want to thank you all for opening up the doors Amen. for us and to us. Um, before I get started, I just want to read one scripture, and the scripture is, Walk in wisdom towards them that are without, redeeming the time. And if you didn't read the Sunday school lesson, shame on you, because that's straight from the Sunday school lesson. So. <laughs> no, but the scripture actually is Colossians chapter 4, verse 5. And, you know, I, 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 I've... I've um, I told my, I'm, I'm really not. Yeah, just get comfortable. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm a, I told my story a whole bunch of times, and, and, and I'd be like, God, you know, I get tired of telling my story over and over again. And so God told me one day, he said, you know what? Forget about the story and just give a testimony. You know? So, yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm very... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm real, you know, I'm real dramatic. I'm like a dramatic individual. So y'all got to excuse me. Test it. Okay, okay, okay. Um, and uh, one thing that's steady going through my mind is the inability for us to stand firm on God's word is directly related to us not reading the word. All right, all right. The inability for us to stand on God's word. God's word. The inability for us to stand up on this word is directly related to us not reading the word. If you want to know what God has for you, if you want to know where you came from, Read the word. If you don't know the definition of faith, read the word. It don't say ask someone because God has given us all the ability to read the word. You might look at me and you might say, well, you know what, Richard? I've never been to prison. Well, let me tell you something. Prison is not a geographical location. People Come wake on. up in prison every day. You get people waking up in prison that ain't got no money. Oh, Lord Jesus, I ain't got no money. Well, you done falsely imprisoned yourself. Oh, Lord, you know what? This dude, this dude, he told me he loved me. He told me he loved me. And I went over there, and he had the other girl over there. You have falsely imprisoned yourself in a relationship. You know what? I just don't want no job. McDonald's, 425 now. You know what I'm saying? My friends, they come to school and you have falsely imprisoned yourself. The inability for you to stand on God's word comes from you're not seeking God's word. It comes from us not getting intimate. Yeah. With God. Uh, the only way for us to understand God's plan for us is we got to understand first, not who we are, but who God is. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of the day, it does not matter who we are. That's right. That's right. God used Pharaoh just so he could harden his heart to bring the children of Israel out of bondage. Yeah. So it's not about us. We're just a mere vessel that God allows to go through the fire. 
to see what we're going to do. Yeah. Yes. One of the first uh, talks I gave when I got out was about Lazarus. And, 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 and I said the statement, it's impossible for you to go through the fire and come out not smelling like smoke. <laughs> it's impossible for you to go through the fire and not come out being burned or singed. Mm. May 15, 1994, I was walking on. Let me take it back a little bit because, I mean, I grew up in a real religious home. Mm. That's right. I love the kids in church. Yeah. We went to church 30 days out of the week. Come on now. I kid you not. I think as I grew older, God started cutting down the days. But I remember on Sundays, Sunday school, morning worship, 11 o'clock service, 3 o'clock service, BTU, Monday service, Wednesday service, Friday night service, go to church Saturday, clean up for Sunday. And to me, that was too much. Man, I, I, my, my dad was a bishop. He died five months before I got out. I didn't get a chance to experience the life out here with my dad. But my dad used to scrap. And I used to hate scrapping. We, we used to get up in the morning. We had a blue and white truck. I'm from Glendale Park. Went to uh, Lisbon Elementary, Skyline High School, uh, Justin F. Kimball. And so we get in the truck every, every early in the morning. He started the truck up. <laughs> well, you know, he was starting the truck up, you know. It wasn't fuel injected back then. Right. And so we would go through the neighborhood and we would go pick up stoves and all of that stuff and throw them in the back of the truck. And I was so ashamed. I was ashamed of the way that my father made a living for us. But I was not ashamed when my dad took that stuff to South Dallas across the scale and now he's coming out with money so we can go eat. I wasn't ashamed when my dad took that stuff across the scale in South Dallas and now I can go to Payless and buy me some shoes. I wasn't ashamed of that. See, we are ashamed of what God sends us through while we're going through it. But when we get on the other side, man, it's all oh, thank you, Jesus. Why not say thank you, Jesus, while you're going through it? Why not say, you know what, God? I'm going through this, but you know what I'm going through with my head held high. I'm not going to let what my physical eyes see to dictate what my spiritual eyes know. I'm not going to let what my physical eyes see dictate what my spiritual eyes or my spiritual mind already knows. Because my spiritual mind has told me greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So anything that is in the world, we are greater than it. Come on. God told me the definitions of in and of. We as a church are in the world. We are not of the world. Amen. Of means it's a substance of it. Uh, yeah. ah, in right. is a position. All right. All right. So God has placed us in the world, but we're not oh, of out, the substance of world. Yes, sir. Right. Right now. We have to be mindful that we are in a situation. Don't let the situation become a part of you. Because once that situation becomes a part of you, now you can no longer find out what God has for you to do in that situation. Yes, right. like that. I was 19 years old, walking home from school. Walk, I, I take that back. No, I wasn't walking home from school. I left home. I forgot that part of the story. I got to tell you the whole story. I left home. My daddy, I got tired and tired of going to church. I pack my little bag. I'm working at McDonald's. I said, I'm making 425 an hour. I'm gonna hit the road. My intention was to go um, to uh, one of our, uh, the managers at McDonald's stayed down the street. I'm like, man, I'm gonna come stay with you, man. I got one more year of school. You know what it is. So he's like, man, come on. So one of my partners came to pick me up. His name was Tory Page. And Tory said, he said, man, yeah, I'm so dope. My God. I had never seen a rock before. Well. Come on now. I had never kids, young men, anybody, I'm going to give it to you real and straight. Yeah. Ah. I had never seen a rock before, but because I'm being in the city. Yeah, I'm so dope before. Yeah. 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 Never seen a rock. Mama. Never. 
And so he was like, man, you know what, man? I got a partner, man, and he always looking for some help. And you know, uh, if we ever meet him, you know, I'm gonna hook y'all up. And I'm like, man, you know, I ain't gonna see this dude no more. This dude's gonna drop me off. But the same way God has an uh, has a, a, a ordained will for us, He also has a permissive will. Wow. So I mean, everything is ordained, but we have the ability to choose. And once we choose, then we are moved from God's ordained will to God's permissive. Will. He gives you the ability. To choose what you want to do. The Bible says choose you today whom you will serve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that point in time, it was time for me to do a permissive will move. My God. We got up to the corner of Lancaster and led better. And I don't know how this man who my other partner was talking about, he was just so happy at the corner. Oh, he said, that go my partner right there. I said, ooh, the one that's looking for work. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> Pastor Ken, when I tell you, I was, I was, I was just like shaking in the car because here I am. We had Lancaster and Ledbetter. We can either go to the right. Come on, come on. We can go to the right to um to um Redbird area, or we can go to the left to where I was supposed to been going. See, we are. I am physically that night when my life changed. I was physically at a point to where is I'm going on the opposite end. Yes. yes. Had I continued to go towards Pleasant Grove, I would have never ended up on the streets. My God, listen, listen, young kids. It does not matter if you're not doing anything. If you put yourself in a position, guilt by association is the same as doing it today. Yes, because. I, 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 I began to let the movies that I used to watch, Minister Society, I used to love Minister Society. Everybody loved Minister Society. I loved it, but what you don't understand is what goes into a man is going to eventually come out of that man. So if I'm looking at Cain and Old Dog and, and, and all these people, and I, and I see I see Cain, Cain and, and he doing this here, and I see Old Dog, then he, Old dog didn't even get shot, and he was the one that should have got shot. Right. Come on, come on. So you're like, man, old dog, an OG. <laughs> old dog didn't get shot. Shoot, I can do what old dog did. Listen. Well, let me tell you something. Old dog wasn't on Cofield with me for 15 years. What? I ain't never seen old dog. So I don't know where, I, I think after Minister Society went out, old dog went back to Hollywood somewhere, and he left a residue in a lot of young people's minds. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And so uh, that was the life that I liked because that's where I watched, you know? And, and so I got into the streets and I left the protection of my father and my mom's house. My God, my God. I did not care what my mom and my dad were saying because I felt like I knew everything. I felt like that once I stepped out of here, I didn't have selling drugs in my mind. It wasn't even in my thought, but I ended it, Sarah. Yes. Y'all didn't hear me? It was not in my mindset to get in the streets and do what I did, but I put myself in that situation. Listen. But God. So those are the two words right there that I want. If y'all don't remember nothing else that I say, remember those two words. Because those two words, that's like the trump card. I don't care what happens in your life. I ain't got no money, but God. My grades are bad, but God. I ain't got no boyfriend, but God. I need to get to work, but God. If we put but God in everything we do, we can make it. And so I was on the streets, and I'm, I'm, I'm barely making it. I don't know what, I, I, you know what, I wouldn't even tell nobody to get in the streets because that is a hard life. You got to hustle every day. I'd rather get a job and just work five days out of the week. <laughs> Come on, man, really. You tell me I, I hustle every day. It's like you don't get no holiday time. You don't get no all time. You don't get no benefits, no employee discounts. What am I doing this for? I might as well go on to work, 
clock in, give me five, five good days out of the week, give me two good days of rest, because this streets ain't popping on nothing right here. It ain't popping on nothing. It ain't popping on nothing. Because they don't want part of your time, they want all your time. Dude, dude that had me up under the gun, I get to the house and go to sleep by 30 minutes. Hey, 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 we got to get up, we got to get that money, got to get it. I, I wouldn't even get no money. I was just, I was, I was just, <laughs> just running. Just running. I was just running. Yeah. So, I was, because that's where I put myself in, but that's God. Right. What the? May 15th, 1994, I was walking home, and my friend, I say, uh, I stayed in, uh, out by Love Pier Airport, which is ironic because that's the same area that Christopher Scott's case got picked up. So, I mean, Pastor, it was a confirmation because we was on the same unit. Our cases happened in the same area. Um, I've been knowing Chris. I hit Cofield Unit in 1997. Cofield is one of the biggest prisons in the system. Holds 5,000 men. My God. 5,000 men in one unit. Texas has over 160 prisons, averaging from 2,000 people on one unit. So you do the math, 160 times 2,000. If you see some people, if you if you ain't, if you walking around today and you ain't seen no, I wonder where Jim, Jim Boy at. It's a pretty good chance that Jim Boy is locked up if Jim Boy was tripping because they get you and they hold you. Yes, they do. They hold you. And so anyway. I was picked up by the police May 15, 1994 oh for a murder and attempted murder. I was 19 years old. Listen. 19. Never, never shot a gun a day in my life. Never shot a gun. Because I was raised up in the church. Come on, See, come on. It doesn't matter because the seeds that, 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 that's implanted into us at Tell a young it. age, Tell it. as we grow, those seeds are going to manifest. Yes. And there are certain things that you just not gonna do. If you were raised up in the church and the word has gotten into you, there are certain things you just not gonna do. You don't even know why I don't want to do that. That don't even seem right. Come on. And so I was arrested for murder and attempted murder. Nineteen, they put me in the back of the police car, took me down to homicide. I gave them the phone numbers of the guy that dropped me off in North Dallas. I gave him the phone number of his mom, because that's where we were in Robin Oaks Apartments. I gave him the phone number of his girlfriend, who stayed on the corner of University and Roper. And I gave him the phone number of my partner, who uh, we had a house together by Love Pell Airport. The detective walked out, stayed gone about 30 or 40 minutes, came back. He said, Richard, your story was checked out. He said, but you killed that man. And you're going to prison. And an eight-hour interview turned into a 17-month stay in loose Terry. In August of two, in August of 1995, at the age of 20, I received 80 years in prison for a murder and attempted murder. Listen well. 80 years in prison. Can you imagine at the age of 20, your whole life just being shut down? What do you do at the age of 20 when they're telling you you got to give them 80 years for free? What do you do? What do you hold on to? Who do you cry out to? You remember your mama used to say, baby, you're going to get into a situation that even I can't help you. Come on, come on, come on. And growing up, you'd be like, man, mama can get me out of everything. Come on. Because in school, who come? Mama. Whenever you get into a fight, mama. And so you feel like that mom and dad is nothing that you can get in that mom cannot physically come and save you from. And sometimes God is going to put us in a situation to where we got to realize the only person that can save us is God. The only person that can save us is God. And so I went to prison in October of 1995. I was 20 years old. 
26, wow. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Mr. Miles, we apologize, sir. We had the wrong person. My God. We apologize, sir. We're going to give you a, a couple of dollars and we're going to make sure that you get on with your life. Don't worry about us. We're not going to worry about you. My God. My God. And I was released in October 2009. I didn't get exonerated until February 2012. So two and a half years, I had to make it. So once again, my journey wasn't over. I walked the walk of a person coming out of prison guilty. I went to fill out the job applications and, and they didn't care about the innocent blood. They seen 15 years of incarceration. But what they don't know is the number 15 stands for new direction after deliverance of bondage. They didn't, they, they didn't know that. They didn't know that when I was released, I was on a new direction because I had just been released, so they didn't know. I, I don't charge it. I, 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 that's on them. They didn't know. They didn't know the blessing that they was turning down. Yes. And, and that's what I want to give out to her because I don't know if everybody has a job in here. But when you go fill out that job application, you are the blessing to them. Come on, listen. You are the blessing to them because if you are a Christian. If you believe in God, then you are a king. Come on, I've been saying it. Come on. You, you are a king. And so if this is something that you want, you just merely walk into your blessing. Because it's already for you. Amen. And so the walk that I had when I got out, it made me very sensitive to the individuals that actually come out of prison and they cannot make it. They cannot get a grasp on society. They cannot do what they need to do because of their past. My God. If, 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 if God did not kill Adam who brought sin into the world, what makes us think that we can punish people again for what one man brought into the world? One man brought sin into the world and God didn't kill him. That's right. That's right. He put him away from his presence. Right. He corrected him. Yeah. But he still blessed him. Yeah. He put him out the garden. He corrected him, but he blessed him. But we as an individual, we want to continue. Yo, you did it. You know, no. Your third time losing. Your fourth time losing. Your fifth time. Now come on, come on now. You're you you steady, you steady have this person locked up. My God. You steady have this person I locked like it. up. I like it. When are we going to release these people? Ooh, we. I like that. When are we? We. we God has already released them. Ah. God has already released me and Chris. Like but steady, like we're steady going to prison. Oh, did it. I know you did it. If you didn't do that, you did something. Okay, well, look here. God's released me. He needs to release you. I'm going to shake the dust off my feet. And I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Because I'm not going to let you, who are falsely imprisoned yourself, to keep me locked up when God and already got me out. Come on. What do I look like this to somebody that's locked up? Out here. And you locked up out here because you want to be locked up out here. See, the difference in my situation and Chris' situation and everybody's situation now, even mine sometimes, somebody else held the key to our release. We hold the keys to our own release. We lock our own selves up every day in situations and mindsets and, and way of lifestyles. We lock ourselves up every day. My God. And God, our only thing God is saying is read your word and release yourself. Ah, come on. Come on. Read your word and release yourself. Like That's all God is asking. He's not asking for you to do more than what you think you can do. He's saying, read your word and release yourself. Ah. That's what he says. 
Spirit will set you free. Yeah. Man, I experienced a lot of stuff in prison. And I'm going to tell y'all just a couple of little things, and then I'm going to get out y'all way. When I got locked up, my dad preached. Yes. Boy, you turn the other cheek. Because my dad was a, he was a verbatim, he going to take this word, come on, come and on. if it ain't in this word, it, it ain't going down. Amen. You know, and, and my dad used to always uh, speak to us about being violent. And, and you know, fighting and all that stuff. And so I never had a fight when I was in school. I was like one of the fastest runner. Uh, <laughs> some of it looked like some trouble finna go down. <laughs> I couldn't wait for uh, uh, what was that thing with uh, sock hop and not sock hop relay races? Cause I know I'm gonna win every. Fast. I done, I done ran all during school here for fights. So now I'm just gonna use this for something. Give me a medal for. <laughs> So I get locked up at age 19. I can't run no more. And I show I only got one cheek. So I can only turn it one time. <laughs> so after that, now I've got to do something else. Yes, you know, so I mean, so a lot of times we, we, we got to we gotta use the word, but then we got to implement knowledge. Come on, come on. Because your spirituality brings you through oppression, but knowledge and education leads you in another direction. Yes. So. The word of God was in me, and so when I went into this institution, Pastor and Bishop, I didn't know how to fight. And so all of these seasoned convicts, yeah. they were seasoned convicts. Yeah, yeah. Guys that, you know, 10, you know, they didn't. That's their career. Yeah, that's yeah. their career. I, yeah. I don't know what happened to them, but I'll tell you what happened to them. Come on. That's the next story. But anyway, so bam, so I'm in loose theory. It ain't no boxing gloves or anything like that. So they take your mattress and they roll your mattress up and they take a sheet and they tie your sheet on your mattress. And so the mattress is standing up probably about this high. And so I'm still in the box. I'm looking good. Square this. <laughs> I'm bobbing and weaving, Chris. I'm looking good. So you know what? I hit the chain bus. I'm going to TDC. Only thing in my head was rocking. I get to TDC, I get to Cofield Unit, and they tell you, see, it's etiquette in prison. Prison has an etiquette. When you get there, you take your stuff up to your cell, you go back in the day room, that's where everybody is, and they say, you got to go there and let them know that you're there, you're a man. So I, that's what I did. I took my stuff up to the cell, Put it up and now I walk back down now to the day room. I sat on the bench and one of these dudes came out. I never saw this dude a day in my life. He walked up to me and said, hey, you. Next time you do that, I'm up. I ain't going to say what he said because this is church, but just guess. And at that one time, listen, young kids. Listen. You have one chance sometimes in life to make a choice that can affect you Listen. for the rest Listen. of your life. Oh my God. Yeah. One chance to make a choice that can affect you for the rest of your life. So choose wisely. Yes. Amen. It was up to me to either confront my obstacle or let my obstacle overtake me. Yeah. And so I, I stood up, Pastor and Bishop, and, and, and I walked behind my obstacle obstacle, because I knew where I was at. I knew all eyes was on me. And I'm walking behind my obstacle. And even though my obstacle was about this tall, he, he was, he, you know, he was, he was, he was a midget. He was <laughs> but that's another point because no matter the size of the problem, you don't know how, how, how it's going to take you. Come on. So I'm really underestimating my problem. I'm looking at this man got me messed up. This man right here coming to my waist. I know he ain't got nothing. He even called out the wrong person. This guy named was Bushwick. He was out of Dixon Circle, Trey Five Seven. He had got shot in one arm. He ain't had no feeling. When man, when the man hit me, the man hit me so hard he knocked me out and woke up at the same time. <laughs> When I tell you I woke up in the infirmary <laughs> and they were putting all them band-aids and stuff on me and stuff and <laughs> oh, <the> person, <laughs> you know I'm like okay God you didn't teach me how to fight 
what, what did I get up out of this here? Everything in life has a reason. It has something that we can pull from. And I was laying in that bed, and God said, when you was in the county jail, you was good because your obstacle didn't hit back. <laughs> I like it. See, we good when our obstacles not hitting back. When we go to the house and we open that refrigerator door and it's just overflowing with food. Hallelujah. Yeah. We good when we go to that mailbox and drop that slot and we got just money coming. Oh, hallelujah. I'm going to church today, Bishop. I'm going to be there, Bishop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What you going to do when ain't no money coming through? Come on. My God. Come on. Tell about it. What you going to do when, when your babies are crying and, and, and they need food? Come on now. Come you got to be more than good. Right. Yeah. You got to be effective. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. You got to be effective. My opponent was effective because everything he threw, it hit me. <laughs> but we as Christians got to be that same way. Everything we say out of our mouth. It got to mean something and it got to hit a point. That's right. Let your yeas be yeas and your nays be nays. If you don't, you're just a good opponent. Come on. That's going to get overtaken by an effective obstacle. That's right. I like it. That's good. And so moving forward, and this is my last story. I thought I got beat up and got, got out the infirmary, Bishop. Um, I started working out. Yeah, because if I couldn't fight, I at least want to look like I could fight. <laughs> but in the penitentiary, they don't care what you look like. They don't see a try. So, so I'm working out. I'm getting my paper, too. This is my first time ever working out. I got 125 on the bar, and I'm sweating like a cow. <laughs> so one day I go in and um, had a guy named Screw, Joel Screw. He was the, um, the person that used to kind of like spot you. And that's when you lay on the weight bench and they're standing behind you and they pick the weights up and they put it on you. And so I'm laying up there, Bishop, and I begin to work out because Joel said, Hey, man, I got you, man. Get on down now. Work out. Let's go. Let's go. And so everybody in prison, you always have these things. You know, you say, <laughs> I don't know why they say that. They just want everybody to look at you while you get ready to lift your weight. So I'm doing my little uh, chant or whatever. And so I began to work out. And then when I finish pushing the weights, I wrap them up. And I, I, I get up off the bench and I push 175. 175. 175 was a weight that I had never put on the bar before. And God spoke to me again. He said, you never know the weight you can push off of you until it's placed upon you. Right. Right. You never know Good. what God has given you the ability to do until you've been placed in that prison. And the only person you can call and talk to is God. I don't know if everybody in here, you know, I'm just glad and honored to be here. At the end of the day, me and Chris Case are both non-DNA cases. The first ones ever. Somebody had to come and admit to Chris Case. Did nobody admit to mine? I don't even supposed to be out. Listen, what the do not supposed to nobody came and admitted to my case but God and now we're in the law books first case we made the law books in February I got exonerated in February 15 2012 I am a part of black history Hallelujah. I am a part of black history I appreciate y'all for letting us come out and trust me man y'all be blessed Come on, we, we can do better. We can touch down, touch down, touch, touch down all over. Touch, touch down. If yes, yes, Lord. the Dallas Mavericks yep. 
time. Beat their opponent. And you just happen to be a fan. With some money on the game. And they go your way. Ain't nobody looking at you. Ain't nobody asking you to say nothing. You know that's your team. They won. Put some money in your pocket. What you gonna do? I'm on the Shoeless team. I'm on Jesus' team. I've seen my opponent. And I saw God cause another person on my team to defeat the opponent. With all the odds against us winning. And we won. And guess what? Because they won. We won. And because God has no respect to us. What he's done for my brother. He'll do it for me. I heard what they said. They told him we did you wrong. But we did you wrong. But we put a little money in your pocket. But then I see God, how God has multiplied whatever they gave them. God has multiplied them. And that while they were locked up, they were not anything, but now they're free. They're entrepreneurs. They're doing great things in the community. They have become celebrities in the kingdom. And we sit down. We sit down. God has shown us somebody that he's actually produced a miracle through. We've been talking about, we've been talking about Lazarus. We've been talking about all these people that he told to get up. We talk about the deaf man. We talk about all these miracles and wonders. I'm looking at you today. Can anybody join me today? Touchdown. Touchdown. Are you ready to touch? Touchdown. And I do want, I want your autograph. I want your autograph. Touchdown. Us down. And these two men, we are we're really blessed to have them in our presence. And they thought that when they got out, they would not only tell their testimony, they have a book. Pass me that book. Reverend Allen, they have a book called Testing. And guess what? We have it today. Amen. They are going to be doing book signing for us today. And for this book, they asked for a small blessing. I'm going to tell y'all something. Y'all can't sell this book because we couldn't afford it for what it's really worth. But people, you're going to find that people are going to bless you for what you asked for. Because what you asked for is nothing compared to the worth of this book. And I think y'all told me it's 20, how much is it? $20. $20 for a blessing. I'm going to have it in my home. And I expect that you all will have it in your home. They're going to be signed it for us today. Man, we're so excited. You don't know, I want to know how you all bless me. Because somebody told me I was dead, left for dead. I was in prison too. But I ain't never did no lockdown time. But I was in prison because of what they said about me. And I believe what they said to be true. But it wasn't until I forgave those that spoke sentence over me. That God freed me. And from my freedom, I adore the testament of your testimony. That, that's why I'm going to continue to wait on the Lord. For they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Shall mount up his wings of eagle. Shall run and not get weary and walk and not faint. And while I'm waiting on God, while he's opening up the doors that he's opening up right now that he opened up over 2,000 years ago, while I'm waiting on him and I see the invitation of his desire for me to come just as I am without any type of perseverance other than to present my body to him and let him work everything else out. While I'm waiting on him, when I'm weak, he makes me strong, strong enough to know that what I cannot do, he can do all things because I can do all things through him. So somebody today, you're really listening, say my. Faith come by hearing, right? 
But how many of us are really listening today? Same, I'm listening with the intent of obeying God. Because somebody under the sun, everybody that needed this testimony was not here today. But those that are here today to know that you've taken charge after God gave you what he promised you. You've taken control over that something that he gave. He's freed you. But now with what he, the freedom that he's given you, you are now doing whatever you want to do when you get ready to the way you want to do it. Although you've been asked to do something a certain way, where is it founded? In the word of God. Now I'm going to open up these doors. And they open up now. And 